After the 1994 strike that ended the baseball season and declared no team a World Series winner that year, baseball was in a rough spot. Just a few years later though, it was back on the map. In 1998, baseball had one of its most famous, arguably now infamous and iconic home run chases in history. Before the end of the 98 season, Yankees legend Roger Maris had the single season record for home runs at 61, a record set back ironically in 1961 and in one year it ended up being broken twice. Mark McGuire of the St. Louis Cardinals and Sammy Sosa of the Chicago Cubs were the two men to do it, and it was a huge deal. It would have been big enough if just one person was chasing Maris's untouched record of 61, but the fact that two players were fighting for the most home runs during that season while simultaneously fighting for the record, it was must-see TV, and it was fantastic for baseball. As we now of course all know, a big component of the famous 61 record being broken not just once or twice, but later Later, three times when Barry Bonds hit 73 was steroids or performance enhancing drugs. It wasn't everything as these guys were already talented major league players but it certainly helped. Guys across the league got bigger, stronger, were able to swing the bat quicker and therefore more home runs were hit and records were broken. From the mid to late 90s until the early 2000s, it was known as the steroid era, an era which of course benefited hitters over pitchers, although there were a number of pitchers using them as well, with Roger Clemens being one of if not the most infamous pitcher to do so. So with all these Jack superhumans hitting home runs left, right, and center during the prime of the steroid era, there was a weakness. Yes, believe it or not, a weakness. It was like kryptonite, except it wasn't some sort of material or way to cheat to combat against these monsters at the plate. It was a person. Yes, a human being, not someone on steroids, just a short scrawny kid from the Dominican Republic. Pedro Martinez was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, being the fifth of his parents' six children, and life wasn't necessarily that easy for young Pedro, his siblings, and his parents who would get divorced when he was just 13 years old. They lived in a one-bedroom home with a tin roof and dirt floors. Pedro's father worked as a janitor while also taking stranger jobs, even though they had small pay because he had to do something to support his family, while Pedro's mother worked for wealthier families as a housekeeper. The Martinez family was so poor that Pedro and his siblings were forced to settle with mangoes for dinner at times. After becoming a teenager, he started to work as a mechanic to help bring in some income to the family himself, but there was a burning passion inside of Pedro Martinez, one that he wasn't going to ignore, a passion for baseball. Pedro's father was actually a good pitcher back in his day, playing with future big leaguers Felipe and Matty Alou, both who claimed he could have made it to the big leagues as well. The reason why he didn't? because he couldn't afford cleats for the tryout. Years later, after his sons Pedro and Ramon wanted to play baseball, he couldn't afford to get real baseballs for them to practice and play with. It was an unfortunate situation for everyone altogether, but Pedro, along with his brother Ramon, were not giving up. They used tree branches and different types of sticks as bats, and as for the baseballs? If you didn't know this, boy, are you in for a treat. Pedro and his brother Ramon used oranges as baseballs, but that wasn't all. No, no, no. What they also did was chop the head off of their sister's toy dolls, take all of the hair off, and use those as baseballs, too, much to the displeasure of their sisters. As fellow Dominican and Red Sox teammate of Pedro's David Ortiz once said, if you can hit a baby doll head with a broomstick, you can hit an inside cutter. Pedro went on to make it all the way to the major leagues, pitching for the Dodgers for his first two seasons before getting traded to the Montreal Expos, making his first All-Star game in 1996, but 1997 was when his career truly took a turn for the better, in large part because of manager Felipe Alou. Yes, the same man who played with Pedro's very own father back in the 50s. In 1997, Pedro Martinez threw over 240 innings, struck out 305 hitters, allowed less than one hitter on average per inning, had a strikeouts per nine of over 11, and an ERA of 1.90, taking home the Cy Young Award. Now, many people's first thoughts may be that he was on the juice, but that wasn't the case. Pedro Martinez never took stairs. He was adamant about that, still is to this day, never tested positive, and I mean just look at the guy. When he played, he was the skinniest and scrawniest one out there. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize any of that. Pedro has spoken out against the steroid use that went on while he played, including when he mentioned times he saw his own teammates doing it with his own two eyes. According to Pedro, 
He was first offered performance enhancing drugs in 1992. He of course declined to ever use them, but went on to state that he used to see his own Montreal Expos teammates injecting each other with these steroids in 1994 and 1995. The coolest thing about Pedro Martinez, at least to me, is the fact that he had his best years in the heart of the steroid era. In fact, the stronger the players got and the more steroid usage went up league-wide, the more dominant he became. There was no secret outside ingredient contributing to this, just natural talent mixed with passion, motivation, and long fingers that helped him throw pitches which defy physics. So Pedro has that incredible 1997 season, and with 1998 being his final year before free agency, the Montreal Expos traded Pedro Martinez to the Boston Red Sox, a team that would immediately extend him to a six-year, $75 million deal, which was the most money for a pitcher ever at the time. Pedro delivered and more. In 1998, Pedro Martinez threw over 233 innings with a 2.89 ERA, striking out 251 hitters, winning 19 games, and finishing second in the Cy Young voting. This was only the beginning. 1999 was the year of Pedro. Let me explain. It was a year that featured one of the single greatest seasons for a starting pitcher in baseball history, arguably the best, when Pedro went out and threw 213 and a third innings, struck out 313 hitters, had a strikeouts per nine over 13, an ERA of 2.07, and a fielding independent pitching of 1.39, winning 23 games in the American League Cy Young Award for the second time in his career, while finishing second in the MVP voting. There are three moments in particular here that are the most memorable, starting with the All-Star Game that summer. The 1999 Summer Classic took place at none other than Pedro's home field, Fenway Park. So, of course, he got the nod to start the game. And it ended up being one of the most iconic All-Star Game moments in baseball history. Pedro faced these humongous National League hitters, some of which were clearly on steroids, and struck out five of the six batters he faced, including the two men who had just broken the record for the most home runs in a single season the year prior, Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire. It was a full-on clinic. And then just a couple of months later, he'd take the mound at Yankee Stadium and strike out 17 Yankees hitters in a complete game victory. Last, but certainly not least, one of the more heroic Pedro Martinez moments, maybe ever. After leaving Game 1 of the ALDS in Cleveland due to an injury, Pedro was out for the next three games and went into Game 5 questionable, maybe able to throw a few innings if needed. Brett Saberhagen got the start for the do-or-die game back in Cleveland, and things went haywire. The Indians kept scoring like crazy, but so did the Sox, and by the fourth inning, 16 runs had been scored and the game was tied at 8. Manager Jimmy Williams had no other choice but to bring in a Pedro Martinez that wasn't nearly 100% in the fourth inning against Cleveland's flaming hot bats. The rest is history. The Sox ended up scoring four runs, and Pedro, well, he finished the game, not allowing a single hit while striking out eight, pushing the Sox to the ALCS. He did it with his nasty changeup, slurve, and with his guts. I'm telling you, the year of Pedro, it's a real thing. 2000 was arguably an even better regular season for Pedro, as he threw 217 innings with a 1.74 ERA, winning the American League Cy Young Award for the second consecutive year and his third in four years. He put up a .74 whip, or in other words, walks, hits per innings pitched, a number that broke the modern day record and the overall record dating back to 1882. During 1999 and 2000 combined, Martinez threw 430 innings, struck out 579 hitters while walking 69, put up a .83 whip and a 1.90 ERA. Those two years were so dominant that statisticians believe to this day that with hitter-friendly Fenway Park as his home field in a league with a designated hitter while also pitching in the highest offensive period in baseball history, this two-year period is known as the best in baseball history by a pitcher. Injuries limited him to 116 innings in 01, although he was still dominant when pitching, but he was back to full health in 2002, leading the American League in ERA, strikeouts, ERA+, FIP, WHIP, and more. Despite this, Barry Zito ended up winning the AL Cy Young that year, and he had a great 2002 season, don't get me wrong, but Pedro had a lower ERA, a lower whip, more strikeouts, and a better win percentage than Zito. Pedro made history, not by winning the AL Cy Young that year, but by losing out to Zito, becoming the first pitcher since the introduction of the Cy Young Award to lead his league in each of those four statistics, yet not win the award. Pedro was fantastic again in 2003, finishing third in the Cy Young race, and although had 
had a down year by his standards in 2004 with a 3.90 ERA, he played a huge part in breaking the curse of the Bambino and winning the Red Sox their first championship in over eight and a half decades. Pedro Martinez is a Hall of Famer, we all know that, but it's the fact that he not only was good or great, but the best pitcher on the planet during a time when guys all over the league were jacked up on steroids. Pedro was shorter and built like a stick, yet the superhuman guys at the time couldn't touch him, and I find that really cool. He went from practicing baseball in the backyard of his poor childhood home by using doll heads to becoming arguably the greatest pitcher in baseball history. During the steroid era, there were big jack guys who were all repeatedly sent back to their respective dugouts to sit down by a short skinny kid from the Dominican Republic who grew up on mangoes. When I think of Pedro Martinez, that is the highlight for me.